All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about when Dyna Bros grow up. Let's check it out. What's going on, YouTube? FXDLS Brooklyn is back in the building. And we're coming at you live here from a beautiful sunrise in my home, Brooklyn. We love you. And look at that, man. There is nothing more beautiful than Brooklyn as the sun rises before things start getting crazy, before things start moving. So yeah, like I said, title of the video, we're going to be talking about when Dyna Bros grow up. That could mean a lot of different things, but basically what it means is, you know, you all know me, I've been riding heavy like I'm riding now for about six years at this point. So anyone who's put in that amount of time will know that you see people come, you see people go, you see people stay, you see people change, and you see some people kind of stay the same. <laughs> I, I like to think that, uh, you know, I've grown and evolved myself, you know. But basically, the topic is because if you go back to some of my content back in, like, 2018, you'll notice it's just me and a bunch of my friends just ripping around on Dinas. Like there'd be days we would have like nine or 10 riders all on Dinas, just ripping around in and out of New York City. These were the glory days. Like I said, it's back in 2018, you know, as my buddy, um, my buddy BX Polymath was organizing some of these bigger rides. We called it the uh, New York Dyna crew back then. And that'd be it, you know, it'd just be a bunch of, Bunch of riders in and out of New York City with Dinas beating up. Fast forward to 2021, right? A lot of those riders have quote unquote grown up, no longer ride Dinas, and have moved on to, let's say, more mature riding platforms. More mature than the Dyna. Whereas you have someone like me, and I'm basically the Matthew McConaughey of the mix in the regard where it's like, yep, I'm still here like five or six years later doing the same thing, riding the same bike, still here, still doing all the same things. <laughs> still on an FX DLS, still on a lowrider, still on a Dyna. Whereas a lot of my friends have moved on to touring platforms or platforms outside of Harley Davidson. You know, FX DLS Brooklyn is just still here, still doing the same thing. In fact, maybe I'm even more ingrained to my original riding style because I have an FXR now and another Dyna. <laughs> Much later. But you've heard a lot from me talking about this subject. Why don't we put the camera on the crew that I'm with today and hear the story from them. Namely, why did they decide to ditch the Dyna and choose a new journey? Would they ever go back to the Dyna, of course? Let's hear it from my friends up here. What's their take on their past Dyna Bro selves. Let us hear from them. Like, oh, Blade Brown for Instagram. Everybody knows he's a Blade Brown Instagram, Blade Brown. Uh, the bike is a 93 FXR. Uh, maybe one day, but I feel like when I brought this bike, like I brought this with the intention of like keeping this forever. Like, this bike's not going anywhere. Like I want this to be like, my Shovelhead Austin like machine, you know what I mean? That I got 30 years from now and tell people how I was riding this in New York City during the pandemic or something, you know what I mean? So I want this forever. One day with, with, with the, me and the old lady like cruising the country or something, like I might get a bag or like something so she even more comfortable in the back with some bags and we could like travel and stuff. But nah, this is, this is me forever. Like I don't ever, ever, ever want to get this bike up.
What's up guys? It's me, Jess, from the channel Her Two Wheels, and I am here to answer FXDLX Brooklyn's question on whether or not I would trade in my 2009 Harley Davidson Dyna Superglide for a Road Glide. Would I trade her in? No, I wouldn't. Would I trade in a Dyna for a Road Glide? Yes, 100%, just not this Dyna. If you guys are familiar with myself or my channel, you'll know that I have a love affair with this motorcycle. She is my babe and she's not going anywhere. You will also know that I have test ridden many road glides and I absolutely love that bike. So you can check out any of these videos over here to get my honest opinion on how much I love the road glide. So I'm interested to see what you guys would do. I'm gonna read through all the comments on this video. Comment down below whether or not you would trade in your current motorcycle, your motorcycle for a road glide. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll read through the comments and I'll see you later. How you doing? I'm good, man, how are you? No, how you doing? Oh, how you doing? uh okay so actually i'll go from the beginning i had a 2015 uh 48 and that thing was cool i basically bought it because it was in my price point and i wanted a new bike anything over 45 minutes on that thing was brutal then decided to move up to uh 16 fxdb thing was awesome but then my wife wanted to start riding so we were in the dealership one day and she saw this thing in cherry and she's like oh it's pretty it's like all right i guess i'm getting this one so then we got this one because she wanted to start riding which was night and day difference and uh even though she's not with me all the time it's it, it just rides way better than anything i've had before undercover dyna bro is that is that the truth yeah, you know, most people buy Dynas trying to make them baggers. I buy a bagger trying to make it a Dyna. Uh, it's, like it's like a fat guy's Dyna, you know? That's a, that's a good one. I got Shane over here. Check out my Pan America. Oh, yeah, we got the Pan America. Shh, don't tell anybody. Yeah, uh, so stock bars suck. Everyone knows that. Uh, then I upgraded to the 12 inch Twin Peaks from LA Choppers. Those were really good. Like they're, if you're just doing straight highway and you're not trying to do any twisties or whatever, uh, they're perfect. Totally comfortable, that they serve their purpose. Um, but you know, like sometimes if you're trying to get into the twisties and you, you feel like you're leaning into it sometimes, the bars will move on you. And then I also just saw this and no one else had them at the time, like a year ago, like maybe two people I ever saw with it. I was like, oh, that's really cool. So I wanted to try it out. And then uh, I put them on and night and day difference. Handles better, you, you, you feel like you have complete control of the bike. Nothing moves on you. Um, real, real clean install too. And who makes those? Uh, this is a Kraus setup. So you have, in order to put this in, you gotta take the, uh, the fascia off and get their mounting plate to push it back. I think it's like two and a quarter inch. Um, so then you can straight mount the T-bar risers to the uh, pullback plate from Kraus. Yeah, undercover diner, bro. Only as a second bike. Have yeah, a good one. Strong is out. How you doing? How you doing? Boom. So I recently got a question from my boy BK Low, and the question was basically why did I end up upgrading to a bagger and um, you know I thought about this for a while I actually have a video explaining my um, the whole scenario of how that went down but I was not in the market for a bagger at all to be honest with you guys um, it was it was more of a uh, spur of the moment type thing in the right place at the right time I was um, I knew that if I ever wanted to go that route it was going to be a road glide I did not want a street glide and um but that was like you know years out ahead and i was like yeah this is gonna be my my old man you know type of bike um but listen i was at the dealership one day and and i kind of saw the bike right there and i'm like you know what let me let me see what's going on with this and it basically culminated in a, in a perfect trifecta i got a great deal for my dyna 2015 street bob um i got a great deal on the bike itself on the 2018 
Road Glide um, was not the special, it was just the standard, uh, basically stock and uh, basically brand new. It was almost only a, a thousand miles or so, so it wasn't a brand new bike. But at the end of the day, everything just kind of worked out and it was basically the best uh, decision I've ever made. I haven't looked back ever since. And, um, you know, I think, you know, traditionally speaking, people that upgrade to baggers are, they're looking for the long ride and, you know, more comfortable ride for longer miles. And, you know, they're at a point in their life where, you know, they can afford it on top of that. But for me, it was just, like I said, a spur of the moment type thing and it just kind of worked out. So very hyped about that. Hey, it's Z. I'm a rider from Atlanta, Georgia. I have a 2020 Lowrider S with a 131 and a 550 cam. She rides. So my thoughts on performance baggers are that they are awesome. I really love watching those big freaking bikes move. They suit them up really awesome. Um, do tricks and things like that. I like watching Kings of the Baggers, and I think this year Harley's gonna take it. Hmm, would I ever move on to a bagger? I think that before I actually moved on to a bagger, because I'm 5'2, guys, I'm like really small, so I would need to do some major uh, changes to the bike to make sure that I could actually sit flat footed. But um, I would probably put bags on Cottonmouth just to see if I like the style. That would be the first thing that I did, but in reference to a bigger bike, Road Glide, uh, probably. <laughs> Check me out on Instagram at Z883, that's Z-E-E-883. Um, and on TikTok, we are Chuck and Z, Chuck A-N-D-Z, and on YouTube, Chuck and Z. Check us out. Yo, what's up guys? It's Iron J Moto and shout out to FX DLS Brooklyn for including me in your video. I am a moto vlogger from Northern Illinois and welcome to my garage. I got my soft tail street bob behind me, my dad's low rider S and a few other bikes here that you guys can't even see. But you did ask me a question and ask me what I thought about the performance or the bagger line in general. I definitely think baggers are super dope. Shockingly, when I first started getting into motorcycles, I actually used to think baggers were ugly. Now that I'm getting deeper and deeper into the culture and motorcycling, I think baggers are super awesome, man. And especially stuff like that bagger racing league that I've been seeing. I mean, it's opened my mind into a different kind of other styles in motorcycling. And I think it's awesome that cruisers are getting the attention like as if it was moto gp you know i know they have like flat track racing and dirt bike racing and all that stuff but to have a performance bagger line that is now you're getting top tier manufacturers building bikes and racing them and it being legitimate i think is super awesome i think it's good for the culture and it's good to keep the soul alive maybe in my future i would love to upgrade to like a street glide as a, a, a future bike i don't know I'll, I'll have to definitely test ride a bagger someday but yeah those are my thoughts um i'm iron j moto follow me on youtube and instagram which is just at iron j moto again shout out fx dls brooklyn man thank you for having me on your channel peace Yeah, <laughs> what up? It's your boy Marvel Kennedy 7. If you're not familiar with my work or my content, I have a 2020 Lowrider S behind me, and next to me I got my 2015 Dyna Lowrider, which I love. Two projects going on at the same time. Dominican dude, originally from New York, now living in dirty Jersey. Now I'm gonna have my 2020 Lowrider S going on two years right now. I just recently got this Dyna, I'm gonna say like five or six months ago. Originally, I wanted a Dyna, and I'm pretty sure you're asking yourself, why do you want a Dyna if you already got a soft tail? It's a total different bike. Um, I get that question a lot. Why did you get a Dyna? Why did you get a Dyna when you have a soft tail? And it's a low rider at that. Total different bike, different chassis, different motor, different look. One's dark, one's um, chrome. Um, they ride differently, they feel differently, they sound differently. Um, so it's, 
the name itself, Lowrider, means nothing when it comes to comparing to these both bikes. Um, reason why, another reason why I got the Dyna is because um, I wanted to build a mini bagger. Um, I originally wanted to go out and um, buy myself a road glide and build it out into a performance bagger, but uh, recently, uh, to my viewers have just found out that I don't want to go down that route because number one, I don't want to spend the money. Number two, I just want to take something that I have, make it really, really special. Um, being that Dinos are not made anymore, Rogue Lives will be made and will continue to be made for a really long time. The Dyna platform is no longer a platform, it's just in the abyss. So if you're able to find yourself a nice clean Dyna, build it out to you know the performance and aesthetics and, and whatever type of bike you want, whatever platform you want, then go ahead and do it. Um, they're amazing bikes, I've had a blast. Nothing but good times on this bike so far in the last five or six months that I've had it. Coming up on this riding season, I cannot wait to take this bike on a few new adventures, new journeys, um, and make new memories. Now my thoughts on the performance baggers right now, um, I don't think it's a phase. I think it's something that's here to stay. Um, I'm a real big fan of it. Um, I love uh, what they're doing right now, especially with King of the Baggers. I, I thought that was a big opening to, um, to, to a new realm, a new world. Um, especially you have two companies as well going back at it, we, which you have Harley Davidson going at it with the Street Glides and Rogue Glides, and you have Indian going at it with uh, Melee Challengers, but uh, hopefully we get to see some Chieftains this year and this season. Uh, but I think it's really cool. And I think it's really cool a lot of people are doing in the streets, the way they're building these bikes out into something that they weren't originally thought out to be. These bikes were, <clears throat> baggers were supposed to be these comfortable rides, for you to take these long ass rides and now they're becoming these beasts of bikes that you're riding like these smaller bikes right here, which is it's pretty crazy. Now, would I ever move on to a bagger? Yes, hopefully one day when I could financially be stable enough to afford it and have several of my toys ready. I don't want to get rid of my toys to get another toy. like. My bikes are my bikes, I wanna keep them, and I wanna keep adding more to the stable instead of getting rid of some. Um, at the moment, I feel like they're too expensive, um, and if I was to get one, I would probably want one new, um, and I would wanna pick out my color, and think, just pick it out in my way. That's the only reason why I want a new, but they are, um, I think they're a bit overpriced. Um, and that's the reason why I'm building out my mini bag around my Dyna, because I'm gonna make it into something that these people are making their baggers into. So you got people making baggers into kind of performance smaller bikes and yeah, we're kind of crossing paths. We're going the opposite ways, which is, it's pretty crazy. BK Lo, thank you so much for having me on this little uh, series that you got going on right now. Huge fan of what you're doing right now. Thank you for having me on. If you guys want to catch my content, check me out, MarvelK87, Instagram and YouTube. Like I said before, I'm building out my 2020 Lowrider S and my 2015 Dyna Lowrider. Thank you guys for watching. Like always, let the force be with you. Ride safe and enjoy the ride, baby. Peace. St. Louis, Missouri, and I have a 2019 Road Glide. I started on a 2017 Street Bob, Dyna Street Bob, and I absolutely love that bike. But the bike was just a little um, too small for me. So I ride every single day. I make YouTube videos. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all of that. And I ride every single day, any weather, every season. So with the street bomb, I had to carry a book bag and it was just too small and such a hassle. So I had to upgrade to the Harley Davidson Road Glide where I have the bag so I could put groceries in the bag. I could put things I need in the bag. I got the um, glove compartment for road trips. I got the music. I got the fairing to protect me on the highway from um, the wind. It just makes riding so much smoother and so much easier. Would I ever go back to a Dino Street Bob? Yes, if I stopped riding every day, I definitely would do a Dino Street Bob. So if you're not an everyday rider, you don't plan on hopping on the highway, a Dino Street Bob is the number one bike that I would recommend. It's one of the best looking bikes. Most of my top pictures have been on the Dino Street Bob. So shout out to the Street Bob, shout out to the Dino Street Bob, the Dinas. 
and shout out to the road glide because that's what we rocking with now make sure you add like subscribe to my youtube it's queen c i'm out let's go hello there <laughs> so <clears throat> i was asked to do a video on what it's like to go from a diner to a bagger um disclaimer i did not sell my diner my diner is built to I mean, the thing's a beast, and I'm never getting rid of it. It's just in the shop right now. I'm getting some more upgrades, because it's never done. Um, so I just added this to my stable. It's a 2021 Road Glide Special. Um, it's the one with the two-tone paint, uh, the billiard red with gloss black. Um, this is gonna be a different kind of build for me. So my Dyna, of course, is purpose-built, club style. Um, love that bike, but this one I'm going a different way because I like variety. I want I don't want two different bikes set up the same exact way um, But first and foremost, I got to tell you I was surprised with how well this bike handles It's a much bigger bike obviously heavier man once you get to speed this thing is in and out of traffic uh, You know splitting lanes like a beast. I mean it, it, I don't know if it's the way it's counterbalanced or what but this bike handles nice. They really, they really did a good job with this bike. Uh, the motor, it's got a 114. I did the stage two kit on it. Uh, so I did the Screaming Eagle torque cams. I didn't want to get too crazy with it yet because it's still under warranty. I don't want to screw that up. Not yet anyway. Uh, but yeah, I did the stage two upgrade, torque cams, um, exhaust. I did the tap performance uh, headers. Uh, Catless uh, Tab Performance Bam Sticks with the Zombie Baffles, uh, 4.5 inch. Um, things are, are loud. It's like one of the only exhausts I really like on the M8s. It sounds it sounds beastly. Um, Lucky Dave's uh, step, not the step up seat. Lucky Dave's uh, Get Lucky seat. So it's just like the regular Lucky Dave seat, except it's wider for the passenger and has way more cushion. So it looks the same. It's just a lot bigger in the rear for the passenger. Um, I did the Fox suspension, rear suspension with the remote res reservoirs, uh, really, really nice suspension. I did Legends on my Dyna, figured this one uh, I'll try something different, so I went with Fox, so far so good. Um, I got the original Garage Moto floorboards and uh, foot controls, purpose built, uh, shift linkage of course, factory 47 16 inch apes, yeah I know apes, uh, but you know, like I said, I like variety. I don't want two bikes set up the exact same way. Then what the hell? I might as well just sell one of them. So I'm setting it up different. It's going to be a different type of build. Um, I got a lot of plans for this bike. Uh, you know, and yes, I'm going to be putting a nice stereo system in it. Uh, just because, why not? Yeah, this, this thing is powerful. I, I mean, my Dyna has a built, and I mean built 110 in it. Um, Man, and it, it's it's a monster, but this thing, just with the stage two upgrade on the 114, this thing's got balls. I'll tell you, it's I, I'm, I would be surprised if it doesn't keep up with the Dyna. I mean, it, it's really, it, it really has a lot of torque. Uh, you know, just you could immediate throttle response. It's crazy, but I, I like it, man. So far, so good. We'll see once I get my Dyna back, uh, which one I'll ride more this season. So stay tuned. But. <clears throat> As of right now, I'm, I'm really impressed with this bike. Uh, if you're thinking about going from a Dyna to a bagger, I can tell you at least, you know, uh, with the newer ones, uh, like I said, I don't know how, how they uh, engineered it, but man, this thing, it's it's nimble. It's nimble when you're going in and out of traffic, that's for sure. It rides super smooth, really nice. Um, yeah, I just, I, I love it so far. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. My name is Connor and I ran a 2017 Dyna FX DB Street Bob. That was my very first motorcycle. And we grew up and we progressed with that bike fairly quickly. We've ridden it, we rode it for about two and a half, three years, and then shortly after we bumped up to this. Initially, initially I was not a fan of the new M8 Softtails. I thought they looked extremely ugly i was a dyna bro through and through i loved my dyna but the maintenance on that thing near the end was a little finicky and then fast forward the new m8s dropped and it was an interesting time for dyna people because everyone was just shocked that they went away and even myself i thought they were extremely ugly i was not a fan of them at all i did like the fat bob because it was the ugliest but somehow it was 
look it looked nice as well we went ahead and test rode them they rode fairly nice they rode a lot better than i had expected and right out the gate i did and my first choice was the fat bob that was the one that i liked the most out of all the lineups and we went to go ride and we test rode the fat bob first and it rode really nice but with the front tire being a little bit wider as it was i wasn't a fan of how it handled in the turns me personally and then I rode a low ride at the dealership in New Braunfels had. They had T-bars the whole nine. It was pretty much set up like my street bob and hot dog. That, I fell in love. The 2019 FXR low rider, but we've done some modifications to it for the track. We have FX FBS tins running on it. And we've done a couple different things to the overall chassis. We ended up we ended up shaving the frame so that way we could fit a 14 and a half inch mono shock from Russ Wernemont. You do have to do that, otherwise it won't allow the swing arm to drop. And then it has a sitting pretty proper, but we did tie in a little bit of Dyna parts here in the front end. We have a set of Dyna Lowrider S tubes and put us two inches over what the stock M8 four tubes are. The stock M8 four tubes come at 23.5, the Dyna come in at 25.5. Since transitioning to the newer M8, I have loved it. This new motor is 10 out of 10, would recommend, unless you were one of the first ones to get the baggers, you had the something, not a fan, but the 2019s and on, can't complain, I love it. We have 35,000 miles on the bike. We started tracking around 34,000, and we put it through its paces that we've run all the way to California as soon as we got it. We ran to Colorado and back. I can't stop saying enough great things about the M8 setup, with the exception of that the low rider, which has been discontinued, it went from 2018 to 2020, that now the FXLR is obsolete. They only have the FXBB, which is the street bob. They have the FXLRS, which is the low rider fancier version of this one. Uh, that it did not come with dual front disc, which is a major upset. It was kind of, just, it was a major disappointment, but I did like the overall bike enough to pick it up. Performance bagger. Should you pick up a bagger and run it to performance bagger? I say no and yes. We're gonna to touch base on the yes. Yes, if you have the pockets to do so. It's weird how performance bagger oriented items tend to be an extra 100 to $300 that you would get for your cruiser class. It seems like a set of floorboards for a cruiser is maybe let's say $150, depending on what brand. And then if you go with the bagger, for some reason they're 250 to 300, that's something that I've noticed. It may not be true anymore, but at the time when I was looking at getting a bagger, that was the case. And they also tend to be a little bit more expensive. But we're gonna touch base on maybe an avenue that you could look, if you are looking to get into performance baggers that you can take uh, that doesn't really break the bank. Now, the reason I say no, there was a point where we went to go to the dealership twice on two occasions to go look at baggers. One was a little just to kind of kick the tires. The second one, we were really close. One of the homies was working at a dealership out of Bernie and we started running numbers and we were trying to get out of the low rider because we were trying to jump into the bagger. There was a couple people that were doing performance bagger stuff that I really liked the way it was and I thought we could have done something interesting here in Central Texas because there's very few. But quickly, I realized that it was just was not what I was looking to do because I would not be able to afford anything. I would pretty much just have bike go to and from work and then never be able to upgrade my parts on my bike till five years down the line. It was because it was just so expensive. I didn't want to put too much of a big down payment on and then your overall note was just so expensive that I just said, no, I'm good. So it was either continue with the low rider, afford more aftermarket parts or get the bagger and eventually upgrade it. And plus, I really enjoyed the nimbleness of the mono shock and the overall and the overall M8 Cruiser class. You could also turn this into your own bagger. The chassis on the Cruiser class for the M8 Softail is just a little different than what the M8 Touring class has, but you can still get the same end result. That you could do a full front fairing on your FXLRS or or your Street Bob fellas out of Florida, Ernesto, he has done a wicked job on upgrading his Street Bob. It is night and day, it just looks amazing. To upgrade your tank, if you have a Street Bob tank, you get a low rider S tank or the Softail Heritage tank and you'll have the five and a half gallon. That will give you more mileage. You can change out the fender. If you're running a Street Bob, go to a full fender and then just swap out the wheels as needed if you're looking for that bagger style. And then you have a more nimble bagger. You can do the FXR T bags on the rear or even or even a set of the Elite Touring Innovations with the Touring Platform, kind of what we did for Colorado. That allows you the ability to have both. That you can strip it down if you want to go bar hop and go to your bike night and you want it more, more of a naked stock look of what it was. Or you can do the Touring setup and then have the full bag setup 
So there is more versatility. You will be dropping in some money as well to get to that look, but then you have both versus if you get the bagger, it's a little bit bigger of a bike, and then you would have to lift the front and the rear and the bagger if you're looking for more performance. One of the things that you can consider if you want a performance bagger, consider picking up one of the M8 Lowrider S's because you already have the inverted front. You could swap the internals to a set of FXDR tubes with GP suspension, like our good friend Oscar did on his 2021 Lowrider S. And then you could do the FXRT fairing or even fit a road glide fairing onto your bike. Some modification may be needed. And then continue to mod it out, add the bags and so forth because you will have the performance front end, the dual disc, and you can upgrade your rotors if you need to. And then you're pretty much halfway there and you're still probably gonna, and you'll be right at what a stock bagger will cost. I hope y'all appreciate this video. Huge shout out to FX Dealers Brooklyn for having me on. Check out my YouTube at ConnorFXTV. Instagram is the same. Check it out. And let's hit the track. Cheers, y'all. What's up, guys? Yuke's here. I ride a Donna Street Bob. I think performance bags are cool and all, but I personally wouldn't own one because. I got friends who do, and they help me carry my snacks, so, yeah. All right, so there you have it. If all your Dyna Bro friends have moved on to new bikes, whether it's baggers, or sport bike, or some other platform, you should 100% be supporting their move and their riding style as they grow and evolve. And don't think too much about it because one day you might find yourself changing things up too. But yeah, shout out to all my friends. You will see them more and more as we enter our new riding season. Looking forward to getting more of these in soon. So yeah, you'll definitely see them more. I got links to each of their Instagrams. And that's it for this one. As always, Celebrate the diversity of bikes, celebrate diversity of riders, keep it moving, stay safe, stay low, listen to the bad brains, and on that, as we chill at this red light, BK Low is out! Is, is, is that it? Is that what we're doing?